이건 세상에서 가장 큰 메탈 3D 프린터입니다. 로켓 전체를 3D 프린터로 제작하는 걸 목표로 하고 있는 스타트업 릴레이티비티 스페이스에서 연료 탱크와 엔진까지도 포함해 60일 이내에 만들고 있죠. I like looking inside a 3D printed rocket that is actually going to go to space. This giant hunk of metal. It's unbelievable. There's a lot of UV coming off the welds. You can film it, but don't look directly at it. You get sunburned fast, so it's like you're suiting up to go in a volcano. All right, we're going to go in to the 3D printer and see how it works. All right, so yep, just hold this up. Don't look at it. We are in the printer. I can see it over there. If we walk around here, we can get up close. So that's the wire melting and the, the print head moving around. So that's the plasma discharge. And it's, it's hard to tell, but it's doing things at every couple milliseconds. It's actually changing the electric waveform, which is how it's controlling the deposition so well. Do you know the temperature of it? Like, is it just above melt temp? It's just or? above melting for aluminum. Yeah, probably a few hundred degrees above. 알루미늄에 녹는 점은 섭씨 660도입니다. 로켓의 몸통 전부를 조금 조금씩 녹여서 만들고 있는 거죠. All the raw metal for the whole the whole rocket that's printed is this. It's a, you know, we kind of joke it's like Charlotte's web, <laughs> like a spider silk. But this is an aluminum alloy. Uh, that's on a wire spool. We actually print about 10 inches a second. So this wire is really going super fast. And then the combination of lasers and plasma arc discharge are working to melt both of them together at the same time. So where does the wire come out? So it's right there. Uh -huh. And then the electric arc discharge happens right at the tip of the wire too. This uh, is a camera? Yeah, that's a camera. 그런데 왜 로켓을 3D 프린터로 만들까요? It's funny to me that you had this experience with 3D printing where you're like, oh, 3D printing is clearly the future. Whereas I feel like a lot of people's experience with 3D printers, as mine has been, it's like incredibly frustrating. I feel like 3D printing is that thing that seems like it should be great, and yet whenever I try it, I don't get a result that I'm happy with. Yeah, I know. I can tell you, we, we had plenty of experiences the first couple of years where we ended up with a pile of metal and it didn't work. 로켓을 3D 프린팅을 하면 좋은 이유들이 있습니다. 로켓에는 네 가지 주요 시스템이 있습니다. 페이로드, 가이던스, 스트럭처, 그리고 추진 시스템이죠. 커다란 로켓 부피의 대부분은 추진 시스템이 차지하고 있습니다. 추진체 탱크와 로켓 엔진으로 이루어지죠. 극좋은 연료와 산화제들은 인젝터를 통해 연소실로 들어와 연료와 산화제들이 반응하여 엄청난 양의 열을 방출하게 되죠. 열에 의해 순간적으로 배기가스가 팽창하게 되며 매우 빠른 속도로 로켓 노즐에서 뿜어져 나옵니다. 이 속도가 빠를수록 그리고 그 양이 많을수록 더 많은 추진력을 얻을 수 있죠. 아시다시피 로켓은 거대하고 복잡한 기계입니다. 지금까지는 로켓을 제작할 때 전통적인 기술을 사용하였죠. 이 말은 로켓을 만들기 전에 먼저 로켓을 만들기 위한 도구들을 만들어야 한다는 겁니다. 예를 들자면 나사의 차세대 로켓인 우주발사 시스템 또는 SLS를 만들기 위해서는 먼저 동체 조립 센터 VAC를 만들어야 합니다. VAC는 로켓을 용접하기 위한 23m 높이의 도구입니다. 이걸로 돔, 링, 배럴 섹션과 같은 것을 용접하죠. 즉 기존의 방법들은 로켓 제작을 시작하기 전에 VAC와 같은 로켓을 위한 도구를 먼저 만들고 모든 맞춤형 구조물들을 정비해야만 했습니다. And they finally got one being assembled on the pad after 11 years of development. 이에 반해 Relativity Space 회사는 창립된 지 5년 반밖에 되지 않았지만 올해 첫 로켓 발사를 계획하고 있죠. I see this as a like old engineering style versus Silicon Valley style of build something, figure out what's wrong with it, and build another thing that fixes those. Right? The difference is I've always done that with software. These guys are doing it with aerospace hardware. So this is the actual rocket tank structure um, of what we're going to be launching to orbit at the end of this year. So this, this actual thing is launching to space. That will go to space. This will go to space. And it's by far the largest 3D printed product really of any type ever made that's going to fly. I think maybe of any type in the world. But it yeah. still looks 3D printed. Like you can still see the layers. Yeah, yeah. Right? You can still see the layers. It only adds an extra uh, 5 to 10% of the mass with the roughness. 
when you actually cross-section the material and look at the machine parts of it, it looks like normal metal. Like actually at this end, uh, this is printed as well. We just machine it afterwards. So it looks like normal metal in the joint sections. Does the surface roughness cause any aerodynamic problems? No, none at all. Yeah, it's actually the exact same aerodynamically. This whole thing, we simulate the print before printing. Because if you just printed you know, the, the 3D file and said press print, you would end up with a printer that's warped and like material falling all over the place. It wouldn't actually work. So we've invented software that reverse warps the whole part before printing it. So the robots are actually doing this really wobbly, weird shape, but then it is actually perfectly straight within a, a human hair um, like across as it, the, as the entire cools. length. As, as it, it cools. cools. The yes. warpy thing turns yes. into the... And we simulate all of that. So it's a big com computational solver um, that simulates it. And there's, there's many, many other problems we've had to solve to actually get printing a rocket to work. But it's all these little pieces over the last couple of years. Um, and we've really started to hit some breakthroughs, which is also why now you see a whole, a whole rocket. Yeah, you can step up here, actually, if you can want. I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello. I'm like looking inside a 3D printed rocket that is actually going to go to space. Yes. <laughs> this giant hunk of metal. It's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> There's uh, like rings inside. Those are printed in stiffeners. And so those help prevent the rocket from buckling and crumpling. So if you had a Coke can and didn't pop the tab, if you try to step on it, it's almost impossible because there's pressure inside that, that keeps it from buckling. But then when you pop the tab, there's no pressure and you can crunch it super easy. It's not hard at all. So rockets are the same. The, the 50 PSI pressure, which is you know, about the same as a car tire, keeps it inflated and keeps it from crumpling. But then those stiffeners also help uh, keep it rigid. Okay. Yeah, so believe it or not, a rocket tank is thinner versus its diameter than a Coke can. So when you look at a Coke can, you know, how, how big it is and then how thin it is. A rocket tank is actually thinner than that. So yeah, it's pretty pretty light. It has to be very light. Sure. 항공 우주 회사들도 금속 3D 프린팅을 사용하기 시작했습니다. 10여 년 전부터 작고 복잡한 부품들을 프린팅으로 시작했죠. 예를 들면 인젝터인데요. 인젝터는 모든 로켓 엔진에서 가장 중요한 부분입니다. 기본적으로 액체 추진제를 빠르게 섞을 수 있는 미세한 알갱이로 바꿔주죠. 산업 전반에 걸쳐 이런 인젝터를 3D 프린팅으로 만들고 있습니다. 지금 보시는 건 버켓 엔진 인젝터로 액체 산소와 액체 메탄 추진체를 함께 섞죠. 로켓 엔진 안에서 불꽃과 화염이 생성되는 과정입니다. 원래대로라면 1000개 이상의 작은 부품들로 만들어지고 만드는데도 9개월이 걸리죠. 하지만 이 회사에서는 전체를 한 조각으로 3D 프린팅으로 만들어냅니다. 2주밖에 걸리지 않고 비용은 10배나 더 저렴하죠. 3D 프린팅의 가장 큰 장점은 바로 부품 수를 줄일 수 있다는 겁니다. 로켓 연소실 내부가 얼마나 뜨거울지 생각해 본적 있나요? 최대 3500 켈빈까지 올라간다고 합니다. 거의 모든 금속을 녹일 수 있는 온도죠. 근데 왜 연소실과 로켓 노즐은 녹지 않을까요? 바로 위를 통과하는 극저온 추진제로 냉각되기 때문입니다. On the spatial main engines, I love to talk about them because inside those engines, it's hot enough to boil iron. On the outside, you can freeze stuff to the exterior of this because you're running liquid hydrogen through these things. But to make those, you basically had to take thousands of very small pipes and then you would form them into the shape of the combustion chamber and the nozzle and then you would braze weld them together and this was a ridiculously labor intensive task you would have 1080 individual pipes running up the side all having to be welded together to make the combustion chamber and the nozzle on the, the space shuttle engines so you can actually 3d print these things 이게 바로 3D 프린터로 프린트되고 있는 로켓 노즐입니다. 극저온 추진체가 지나가는 채널들을 보실 수 있죠. 하나의 단일 부품으로 만들어지고 있는 것도요. 외부에서 수천 개의 파이프를 더할 필요 없이 금속 분말과 레이저를 사용해서 만듭니다. So you can see the cooling channels are all being built as the one piece. So this is a nozzle. It really just lays down a layer of powder that's about a 20th the thickness of a human hair. So it's really, really fine layers, just over and over and over and over, relentlessly for probably about a week or so, and then out comes a rocket nozzle. All printed as one piece, 
it's way cheaper than traditional. And this has four lasers going at once. That's amazing. I get asked a lot, well, aren't 3D printed metals not very strong, or how can it actually work? But the printed materials are stronger than they would be built traditionally. Actually, it's counterintuitive. It is. Because we develop our own custom alloys in-house. So we have a whole material science team just developing our own alloys for 3D printing. And the fact that it melts and then cools and solidifies very, very quickly, you can take advantage of that, that physics principle to get really strong alloys. 3D 프린팅의 또 다른 장점은 빠른 반복이 가능하다는 겁니다. 부품을 빠르게 만들고 테스트할 수 있죠. 그리고 빠르게 다시 디자인해서 인쇄할 수도 있습니다. So this is a version of the engine that's about three years old at this point. But what's amazing is when you actually look at the engine design today, it looks entirely different than this. So each version we build, we can iterate and make better. So that's the other, you know, when we say software-driven manufacturing, that's really what it is. Since you don't have fixed tooling, all the part geometries are just controlled via the, the CAD model, and then the printers just print, you know, direct from file, essentially. It means you can actually change the design extremely fast. So building a whole engine only takes us about a month. So then a month later, you can do a better version, and a month later, a better version than that. So this particular one will actually be, I believe, one of the first flight engines that's actually launching to orbit on our first rocket. So this tubing, not 3D printed, right? Not today. Okay. And the future versions, we're actually, you know, integrating that into the printed housings, and we're going to have a way that that's all printed too. 3D printing 위치는 가장 큰 영향은 로켓이 어떻게 생겨야 한다는 통념을 완전히 바꾼 것일지도 모릅니다. 3D 프린팅을 사용해서 현실적으로 불가능하다고 생각된 여러 부품들을 만들 수 있습니다. 곡선미가 있고 로켓에 적용되기 힘들었던 디자인들도 만들 수 있는 거죠. Uh, this is actually part of our next rocket. Uh, Terran R. So it's even larger. This is like the base of a tank? Yeah, yeah. So it's going to go out. It's, it's almost done printing. It's going to go out about to here. So it's 16 foot diameter. But it's almost like a shell. <laughs> I was going to say, like, this reminds me of suddenly we're in the Little Mermaid or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just for stiffness, though. It's not that you plan to make it bio-inspired. It's that, the, like, that structure is actually the optimal structure. Yeah, yeah. We're actually designing many features in the rocket that could not be manufactured unless it was 3D printed, which is one of the, the secret sauces of why you had to build a whole company around it, is because our rocket actually looks entirely different 3D printed than it does traditionally. Like in my mind, it's been more akin to like gas internal combustion engine to electric. You know, really people are trying to put batteries and electric motors into existing products for decades. Like everyone knew electric vehicles were the future, but um, Nissan and Ford had really not compelling products for a long time. It wasn't until a company came along, you know, called Tesla, that decided, well, actually, the shift to electrification means the batteries, the electric motors, the factory, the design of the product, how we're actually going to scale the company, the supply chain, all of it's different because of electrification. I mean, that's in some ways the dirty secret of electric cars and why they're able to be automated in production because the part count is so much lower. So for a fully 3D printed rocket, we have 100 times fewer parts, which is what we're, we're guiding to. There, there's no fixed tooling in our factory at all, um, unlike the rest of aerospace that's still really 60 years later, even since Apollo, building products one at a time by hand with hundreds of thousands to millions of individual parts. And no one's really changed that paradigm of how an aerospace factory actually fundamentally works. Yeah, this is the new uh, fully 3D printed rocket. So yeah, we'll have dragonfly wing type structures and we're building it still, but that's the first one and then that's that one for scale. So yeah, it is definitely, definitely bigger. Yeah, so our, our rocket is named Terran 1 and Terran R, and then our 3D printer Stargate. So all, all the things at Relativity are named after StarCraft. Uh, so, yeah, of course, the, the Stargate printer was what the Protoss used to warp in spaceships. And so that's what's warping in spaceships at Relativity. Um, we have a system in our avionics called a pylon that we have to build a lot of. So we always joke we have to construct additional pylons. 대부분의 사람들이 로켓이 어떻게 만들어지는지 잘 모릅니다. 조금 더 정확히 말하자면 막연하게 로켓이 엄청난 기술력으로 만들어졌기 때문에 로봇들이 마구잡이로 붙어서 만든다라고 생각을 하는 거죠. 하지만 사실은 그렇지 않습니다. 
항공 우주는 자동화 프로세서를 사용한 적이 아예 없으니까요. One of the issues, right, is that you're not making a lot of rockets, right? So there's no, you know, incentive to like figure out how to tool up a factory to like pump out rockets like 100 a day or something. Exactly. Like you would for cars. Exactly. You're not making a lot. Even with commercial aircraft, you're not making nearly as many. And there's orders of magnitude more parts and complexity. A commercial aircraft has several million individual parts. So to have robots assemble several million parts. When an automobile has you know, tens of thousands, is completely different. It's a much harder problem. So that's where 3D printing is automation for aerospace because you're not assembling all those parts with robots like you, you would with a car. You're assembling them in the 3D file, and then the printer just prints them assembled. The plan for relativity space. Yep. Is it low Earth orbit, or is it going further than that? So for Terran One, it's mostly low Earth orbit. The first rocket. Terran R can actually send payload to the moon, to Mars. I mean, it's pretty, pretty huge. I founded the company because I really thought that there needed to be, you know, dozens of hundreds of companies making Mars happen. We're focused on taking this 3D printing tech and what we call the factory of the future, and one day shrinking it down to something we'll actually launch to Mars and build an industrial base. So that's the the long-term vision of the company is build the industrial base on Mars. In many ways, this factory is just a prototype. It's still far smaller than a traditional factory. It's far lighter, and I think it's inevitable someone has to build this company. I don't know that in 10, 20 years that you will be 3D printing rockets all the time because if you are flying lots of rockets, it becomes cheaper to have a dedicated machine for it. I do think that as a company, they are well placed because even if Terran fails to capitalize on the market, even if nobody wants to use it as a launch vehicle, they are clearly now the world experts on 3D printing rocket hardware because they've done everything, right? They've tried to apply 3D printing to places where a lot of people dismissed it. So I think they're sort of secure as a company. Whether we will see rockets being 3D printed all the time, uh, that's a good question. There's been a lot of talk recently about billionaires going to space. Yeah. Will a 3D printed rocket make it possible and a lot cheaper for me to go to space? Uh, yes, I mean, certainly what we're doing is lowering the cost. So our, our rockets um, are costing about five times to, you know, I believe we can get to 10 or even 100 times cheaper with a fully reusable rocket than what we have today. Um, so it, it can definitely climb down the cost curve. But I also think, you know, going to Mars and, and the first people that are going, it really is about what, what is the point of being a human being? Like for me, why go to Mars is if we were having this conversation and a million people were living on another planet, I think it would expand the possibilities of human experience and what it means to be a person. Like we'd, we'd have YouTube channels on Mars and people sharing what life on Mars is like versus Earth and there'd be long distance Amelie, like love story. Like I think there's just a lot of richness in, in what human culture and society can be about. Yes, yeah, so I think there's criticism about, you know, billionaires going to space and, and I don't agree with, you know, all, all of the projects need to actually add up to some vision that is meaningful. I think that's really important. But I do think going to Mars is really just about, you know, we've lived for generations on Earth, so what's it all about? Like, why, why do we want to keep improving and getting better and um, furthering society on Earth? So for me, it's pretty existential what it means to be a human being.